In this video we're going to talk about the features of the Dash 160 bundle of CAM350. Users of the existing 115 and 155 bundles are moved to the 160 bundle with release 14. We've added several features to this bundle and I'd like to show you some of those today. The first change becomes apparent in the auto import process working with Gerber and NC files. If I import a set of Gerber, this dialog is similar to what you've seen in the past, but the next screen is what we're calling the Stack Up Visualizer, and this does just exactly that. It helps you visualize the Stack Up. And we can even export the stack up and uh, bring it into another downstream tool or even some other uh, CAD systems will import that stack up. So if I want to see a stack up, I could just actually automatically add the dielectrics and then I can change the thicknesses here to be reflective of what I want. But really what I, my goal here is, is to set the blind and buried via spans, which is something that you had to go inside the tool to do previously but now you do this on the import screen and it's much easier to do than it was in previous versions. There is an option to extract a netlist at this point. Uh, you can either answer yes or no, depending on where you're just whether you're just viewing the data or if you want to run some sort of analysis. Let's say no for right now. One of the other changes in this version is the inclusion of the tables into this dialog at the bottom of the screen. So everything from system messages to the decodes used to uh, nets when they're extracted to even the IPC 356 netlist, which we've loaded when we loaded the Gerber layers. Drill and mill tools, layers, parts if they're available. And again, uh, errors, if you run analysis, will show up in this centralized location now, independent of which type of analysis you run. Which brings us to the other uh, feature that I'd like to show you, and that is that the analyze capabilities have changed in this bundle from what we were used to in older versions, in that I now use the streams editor to run the analysis on my designs. All of the items that were in the old DRC dialog are now in the streams editor. And we've also included a cleanup algorithm which helps you clean up the data before running analysis so it limits the number of false errors on the back side. Now you'll only get access to the analysis that was available in the DRC. You can see some of the other ones that are available to you but they will be grayed out. If we decide to run this, just a matter of running it, and it will go through and run all this analysis on our design, and then feed back any error information down here into the Air Explorer. So again, once we've found our errors, we click OK. We're now done with this menu. This is another change in this release, is that the analysis itself and the errors are broken off from each other. So once I've run the analysis, I can get rid of that dialog. Now I can use the Air Explorer dialog down here to go to the particular error that uh, we have found. And as before, you click on the error and it will go to it. This also works for netless comparison, which in previous versions you were forced to go through several dialogs to get to the netless compare option. Here we can just simply go to the external net ribbon underneath the analyze ribbon and inside of it are some parameters that we can set. For instance, uh, since we've already imported our IPC D356 netlist, I can turn that off. But what it's going to do is extract a netlist from the graphics and then compare it to that IPC 356 netlist and then show us if there are any errors and it will do that all from this dialog instead of having to bounce back and forth between several dialogs. And as you can see there were no errors and we do have the option to report 
not just this analysis, but all analysis, you have the option to have it report if there are no errors as well as when there are errors. We've also added those same checks to these interactive menus up here. So for instance, if I just wanted to run annular ring, I can go up here, set my value, and just run the annular ring uh, analysis just by itself. And that's reflective of all of these across the top here. Each one of those is a different type of analysis and you can run that uh, independently of streams or you can actually add it to the stream, the checklist, and then use that going forward. And the errors again will show up down here in the bottom. In addition to the analyze enhancements in this version, we've also provided some additional export options to users of the 160 bundle. They can now create ODB++ or IPC2581 information. On the import side, they can now import DXF and export DXF data. Again, we allow both import and export of DXF in the Dash 160 bundle. Another feature available to users of the Dash 160 bundle is cross probing. We currently cross probe to Expedition, PADS, Allegro, and ORCAD. To enable the cross probing, it's under the Analyze ribbon, and in here I can just go and connect up to the particular CAD tool that I'm using enable the cross probing. Once the cross probing is enabled I can minimize this menu and then I can arrange either on multiple monitors or on one screen so that I have both the CAD tool and the CAM tool. Turning on a layer in one turns it on in the other, zooming in one zooms into the other. As you can imagine this would help greatly when we're trying to verify problems that we've found running analysis. Also if we just want to do an inte intelligent visual inspection of the, uh, the design we can use the cross probing. Another new feature in version 14 that's included in this bundle, maybe the most important new feature, and that is the 3D capabilities. I can now go straight from this 2D version of the design straight into a 3D mode and view and manipulate the design over here in a 3D mode. I can zoom into areas of the board. I can see drills, including partial drills and through drills, and see which layers they go through. Uh, I can do things like cut into the board in different axes to uh, view particular areas of the board and of course I can move the camera around and peel off layers and uh, all the things that you might do with 3D. But another thing that might happen is you run analysis over here in the 2D world, you found a particular problem, you want to go to that particular problem and then once you find it here in the 2D world you may want to look at that particular issue also over in the 3D world. So we give you the ability to go through the errors in both 2D and in 3D modes. 3D is available for intelligent data including component information. But if you have only Gerber and NC, you can still get a 3D representation of your design. It simply won't have part information on it. But you can still split apart layers, zoom in, take a look inside the board, peel off layers. So this is the 3D implementation in DFM Stream, CAM 350, actually across all bundles now.